B.F. Skinner's theory of learning is a cornerstone of behavioral psychology. It explores how behaviors are shaped by their consequences. Hi guys, welcome to this channel. Let's delve into the key aspects of operant conditioning to gain a deeper understanding of this influential psychological concept. Operant conditioning is a type of learning where behavior is strengthened or weakened by the consequences that follow it. Unlike classical conditioning, which focuses on association between stimuli, operant conditioning emphasizes the relationship between behaviors and their outcomes. B.F. Skinner, an American psychologist, is credited with developing the concept of operant conditioning. His work, especially with Skinner boxes and pigeons, played a pivotal role in shaping our understanding of how behavior is influenced by its consequences. Operant conditioning involves three main components. The antecedent, which is the stimulus that preceded the behavior, the behavior itself, and the consequence, which is the outcome following the behavior. These elements collectively influence the likelihood of the behavior recurring. Reinforcement strengthens a behavior, increasing the likelihood of its reoccurrence. While punishment weakens a behavior, decreasing the likelihood of repetition. Both can be positive or negative. Positive involves adding a stimulus and negative involves removing a stimulus. Examples of operant conditioning are abound in daily life, from a student studying harder to receive better grades, which is positive reinforcement, to a driver slowing down to avoid a speeding ticket, which is a negative reinforcement. Even common phrases like time out for misbehavior reflect operant conditioning principles. Skinner conducted his studies on rats and pigeons in specifically made boxes called the Skinner box. In these experiments, a hungry rat is placed in the chamber, which is built in such a way that the rat can move inside but cannot come out. In the chamber, there is a lever which is connected to a food container kept on top of the chamber. When the lever is pressed, a food pellet drops onto the plate placed close to the lever. While moving around and pawing at the walls, which is exploratory behavior, the hungry rat accidentally presses the lever and a food pellet drops on the plate. The hungry rat eats it. In the next trial, after a while, the exploratory behavior begins again. As the number of trials increase, the rat takes lesser and lesser time to press the lever for food. Conditioning is complete when the rat presses the lever immediately after being placed in the chamber. It is obvious that lever pressing is an operant response and getting food is its consequence. In the above situation, the response is instrumental in getting the food. That is why this type of learning is also called instrumental conditioning. Examples of instrumental conditioning are abound in our daily life. Children who want to have sweets in the absence of their mother learn to locate the jar in which the mother hides the sweets for safekeeping and eat it. Children learn to be polite and say please to get favors from their parents and others. One learns to operate mechanical gadgets such as the radio, camera or television based on the principle of operant conditioning. As a matter of fact, human beings learn shortcuts to attain desired goals and ends through instrumental conditioning. Let's look at a few determinants of operant conditioning. You may have noted that operant or instrumental conditioning is a form of learning in which behavior is learned, maintained, or changed through its consequences. Such consequences are called reinforcers. A reinforcer is defined as any stimulus or event which increases the likelihood of the occurrence of a desired response. A reinforcer has numerous features which affect the course and strength of a response. These include its types, such as positive or negative, frequency or number, quality, whether it is superior or inferior, and schedule, whether it is continuous or partial. All these features influence the course of operant conditioning. Another factor that influences this type of learning is the nature of response or behavior that is to be conditioned. The interval or length of time that lapses between the occurrence of a response and reinforcement also influences operant learning. Let's look at these in a little bit more detail. Number one, types of reinforcement. Reinforcement may be positive or negative. Positive reinforcement involves stimuli that have pleasant consequences. They strengthen and maintain the responses that have caused them to occur. 
Positive reinforcers satisfy needs which include food, water, medals, praise, money, status, or information. Negative reinforcers involve unpleasant or painful stimuli. Responses that lead organisms to get rid of painful stimuli or to avoid and escape from them provide negative reinforcement. Thus, negative reinforcement leads to learning of avoidant and escape responses. For example, one learns to put on woolen clothes, burn firewood, or use electric heaters to avoid the unpleasant cold weather. One learns to move away from dangerous stimuli such as fire because they provide negative reinforcement. Negative reinforcement is not punishment. The use of punishment reduces or suppresses the response while negative reinforcers increase the likelihood of avoidance or escape response. For example, drivers and co-drivers wear their seatbelts to avoid getting injured in case of an accident or to avoid being fined by the traffic police. It should be understood that no punishment suppresses a response permanently. Mild and delayed punishment has no effect. The stronger the punishment, the more lasting is the suppression effect, but it is not permanent. Sometimes punishment has no effect irrespective of how intense it is. On the contrary, the punished person may develop dislike and hatred for the punishing agent or the person who administers the punishment. Number two, number of reinforcement and other features. It refers to the number of trials on which an organism has been reinforced or rewarded. Amount of reinforcement means how much of the reinforcing stimulus, such as food or water or intensity of pain-causing agent, one receives on each trial. Quality of reinforcement refers to the kind of reinforcer. Chickpeas or pieces of bread are of inferior quality as compared to raisins or pieces of cake as reinforcers. The cause of operant conditioning is usually accelerated to an extent as the number, amount and quality of reinforcement increases. Number three, schedules of reinforcement. A reinforcement schedule is the arrangement of the delivery of reinforcement during condition trials. Each schedule of reinforcement influences the course of conditioning in its own way and thus conditioned responses occur with differential characteristics. The organism being subjected to operant conditioning may be given reinforcement in every acquisition trial or in some trials it is given and in others it is omitted. Thus, reinforcement may be continuous or intermittent. When a desired response is reinforced every time it occurs, we call it continuous reinforcement. In intermittent schedules, responses are sometimes reinforced and sometimes they are not. This is known as partial reinforcement and has been found to produce greater resistance to extinction than is found with continuous reinforcement. Number four, delayed reinforcement. The effectiveness of reinforcement is dramatically altered by delay in the occurrence of reinforcement. It is found that delay in delivery of reinforcement leads to poorer levels of performance. It can be easily shown by asking children which reward they would prefer for doing some chore. Smaller rewards immediately after doing the chore will be preferred rather than a big one after a long gap. In conclusion, operant conditioning provides a powerful lens through which to examine and understand behavior. By dissecting the intricate relationship between actions and consequences, we uncover the mechanisms that drive learning and shape the fabric of our daily lives. So that's it for this video. If you are looking for quality mental health resources, please visit my Etsy shop. The link is provided in the description box below. If you like the content of this video, please like it and subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching.